Bribery and corruption among African politicians is a long-standing problem that has hampered the continent's progress. The perception of widespread corruption has contributed to negative stereotypes about Africa's ability to govern itself effectively. However, it is important to recognize that corruption is not limited to Africa and can occur in a variety of forms all over the world. While corruption undoubtedly poses significant challenges to development, it is not the only factor influencing Africa's governance capabilities. Recent events in Niger call into question the notion that Africa cannot produce trustworthy leaders. Despite taking power in a military coup, Niger's General Tiani has demonstrated a commitment to transparency and accountability. Unlike many previous military leaders who encouraged corruption and authoritarianism, General Tani and his cabinet have prioritized governance reforms and the well-being of their subjects. Although international bodies condemned General Tani's rise to power and called for a quick return to civilian rule, some have praised his actions since taking office. General Tani stands out from the typical narrative of African military rulers by rejecting the status quo and working to combat corruption and inefficiency within the government. His leadership represents a ray of hope for a new era of accountable governance in Niger, as well as a reminder that effective leadership can emerge from unexpected places, challenging preconceived notions about Africa's political landscape. The only people who supported him were the people of Niger, who were already fed up with the poverty and suffering caused by the deposed French puppet president, Mohamed Bazoum, and his fellow military leaders from neighboring Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea. Despite pressure from the West, Europe, and the regional bloc, General Tiani refused to give in and chose to face international sanctions, as well as the threat of military intervention from the regional bloc led by Nigerian President Tinubu. Today, this defiance has paid off. As French forces have been expelled, the unfair French defense pact has been terminated, and the world has come to accept that Niger is now ruled by a military ruler. Niger has also joined forces with Mali and Burkina Faso to form the Sahel States Alliance in order to strengthen itself. According to a recent report published by the local Nigerian news outlet Lyman Dojardui, French President Emmanuel Macron attempted to bribe General Tiani with a hopping sum of 60 billion CFA francs, or approximately $100 million. And in exchange for the money, the general was required to return power to Mohamed Bazoum. Doesn't it sound desperate? Although it is unclear when this incident occurred, it was most likely before the threat of military intervention by the regional bloc, which France fully supported. The good news is that General Tani firmly rejected the money and sent France back to its country with its tail behind its leg. After Ibrahim Troyer expelled French forces from the country, France was forced to relocate all of its troops from Burkina Faso to Niger. With Mali and Burkina Faso no longer on its side, France was aware that its hold on the Sahel was eroding and was desperate to keep it from slipping completely. The coup, which saw General Tani take over, dealt a final blow to France's favorite African president. France, unwilling to let go of Niger, decided to pursue every possible option to ensure that its puppet was reinstated. So, while the French condemned the coup alongside the other Western countries behind the scenes, the French government decided to use bribery to persuade the Niger military junta to restore civilian rule. France probably assumed that General Tiani was like any other African leader known for accepting bribes and turning the other way when told to. President Macron was taken aback when General Tani turned down the bribe and returned it. When bribery proved ineffective, France resorted to supporting Ikawa's threat of military intervention in Niger. Fortunately for Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso threatened to join Niger if Ikawa's dared to intervene militarily in the country, escalating the regional threat of war. And no one, including Ikawa's, wanted war, so the idea of a military intervention was dropped. So all of France's efforts failed and Niger eventually slipped away, leaving Chad as the only country in the Sahel over which France still wields influence. However, even this influence is shaky, as Chad's military junta recently visited Russia to discuss cooperation. If that cooperation with Russia becomes official, France will finally lose all of its influence in the Sahel, which is probably for the best because each of the Sahel countries 
are independent entities, not colonies, and should never be influenced by any country. General Tiana's refusal to accept President Macron's bribe demonstrates not only his outstanding leadership skills, but also his commitment to Niger's freedom and sovereignty. General Tani, like Ibrahim Traoré, is an inspiring leader. The fact that President Macron considered bribing the general suggests that France used bribery on numerous occasions to ensure that other African leaders followed their plans and objectives. Those leaders, whoever they are, are a disgrace to true leadership and should learn from General Tiani. France's attempt to bribe the Niger military junta demonstrates how desperate they were to relinquish control of a country that was not theirs but provided them with easy access to cheap natural resources at the expense of the Manchurian people. During a recent interview, General Tiani stated that the people of Niger suffered severe consequences as a result of the regional bloc sanctions imposed on them in August 2023, as well as a shocking statement made by the French president. According to General Tani, amid tensions between Niger and France, a member country of the European Union attempted to suggest a solution to the crisis caused by the coup in a video conference with other EU members. French President Emmanuel Macron was not present during this meeting. Instead of confronting Niger's military government, the European Union member country proposed negotiating with them. However, when the French government was notified of the proposal, President Macron reportedly issued a shocking statement. According to the general, Niger is French territory, and it is not the responsibility of any country to propose a solution to the current situation. What an outrageous claim. In response to President Macron's remarks, General Tiani stated that President Macron clearly demonstrates his lack of historical knowledge because he appears to be unaware that Niger or the territory that is now Niger had already established itself as a polity with its own social organization by the time the French Revolution occurred. The general went on to say that if the country in the video conference confirms his account of the incident, it will prove that President Macron's statement was made. He then concluded by stating that Manchuria belongs to no one but itself, and that any country that respects Niger's sovereignty and independence will have a relationship and cooperation with the country as long as it is based on mutual trust. General Tiana's statement is entirely correct. Niger belongs to no one but itself, and France needs to understand this. European countries such as Germany have begun to recognize this fact. Also, Russia is gradually being accepted as a reliable partner in Africa because they treat African countries as equals rather than as beggars or victims. If France hopes to resume partnerships with Sahelian countries, it must first change its attitude. Africa is changing, and the wave of coups in the Sahel has not only altered African geopolitics, but has also brought to light distinguished African military leaders. Africa requires strong leaders, and the military may be the place to look, who knows? What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.